Everything in life is temporary, whether it's your favorite phone, person, or motorcycle. Old things go out, new things come in, and then all you're left with are memories. In the ever-evolving world of motorcycles, some models leave a lasting impression long after they've been discontinued. These bikes, hold a special place in the hearts of riders who appreciate their unique designs, performance, and overall charisma. Let's take a ride down memory lane, and explore 10 discontinued motorcycles that continue to capture the imagination of riders around the globe. Number 10, Yamaha VMAX. The Yamaha VMAX is by now, a legend in the world of motorcycle lovers. Being on such a powerful bike with that much torque intimidates anyone. The 12 pistons of Brembo brakes do change things and make it safer. It's probably one of the fastest cruiser motorcycles ever built by a Japanese bike maker, credit to its 1679cc, V4 engine with 197 horsepower, and 167 newton meters off torque. Not only is this a lot higher than the best of Harley-Davidson's, but it's even more than the Ducati Diavel V4, and the Triumph Rocket 3. Given how insane these numbers are and how epic the Team Blue Cruiser looked, can you blame us for wanting it to come back on sale? Number 9, Harley-Davidson XR1200. Think iconic Harley-Davidson's from the last 15 years, and the XR1200 will surely spring to mind. It's one of the company's most gutsy motorcycles in its over 100-year life, commonly dubbed as the sportiest Harley-Davidson ever. Credit for that title goes to the XR's unique flat-track-inspired nature, evident from high-quality suspension, wheels, and, of course, a grin-worthy V-twin powerhouse. In 2010, Harley introduced a spruced-up version of the XR, called the XR1200X. It came with a Batman-inspired all-black aesthetic, topped by upgraded Showa USD forks and piggyback shocks. We'd love to see the XR1200X make a comeback in these times when the market is way more open-minded and welcoming than in the last decade. Just picture a sporty naked Harley-Davidson armed with the new Revolution Max 1250cc engine. Bonus points if it's in the same tune as the 150 horsepower Pan America. We really hope so. Number 8, Harley-Davidson VRSC. Just like the XR1200, Harley's VRSC, also called V-Rod, is more than suitable for a comeback. It continues to be a hit in the used motorcycle market, thanks to its unmatched muscle bike aesthetic and then unique liquid-cooled V-Twin powerhouse. The latter made it the most powerful Harley-Davidson cruiser during the early 2010s, with an output of around 123 horsepower a figure higher than Harley's current most powerful cruiser, the 121 horsepower Sportster S. The Porsche-designed 1246cc engine had a little work to ramp up the bottom end for this 2009 version but, even its claimed 115 newton meters is down on competition from the Yamaha VMAX and Triumph Rocket 3. This performance, along with its top quality cycle parts, helped Harley make a name for itself in the drag racing world too. Number 7, KTM RC8. Many people think the RC390 is KTM's finest sport bike ever. But it's the duty of true motorcyclists, like you and me, to remind them of the 1190 RC8. The flagship RC is KTM's only full-fledged out-and-out sport bike to date. It employed a 1195cc, V-twin powerhouse, good for just over 170 horsepower, and 122 newton meters of torque. The engine sat inside a tubular steel frame, joined by 43mm USD forks and a monoshock, both adjustable. With rumors of the RC990 ever so prominent, we can't help but dream of the RC8's comeback. After all, the Austrian brand has an ever-powerful and capable engine in its arsenal, the new 1350cc V-Twin. With just under 190 horsepower, it'd surely leave a lasting mark in the segment. Number 6, Aprilia Cape on Ord. Aprilia and adventure bikes might not be synonymous terms. But in 2013, 
the Italian bike maker whipped up the Cape Honord 1200. The motorcycle served as the company's full-fledged adventure bike, armed with a 1197cc V-twin engine. It produced a humble 125 horsepower, all sent to the wheel via a six-speed transmission. Since then, the company has had no over 1000cc adventure bike, and it's high time the company steps back into the ring. Bonus points if the new Cape Honord boasts Aprilia's world-renowned 1077cc V4 engine. Sounds like a Ducati Multistrait a V4 killer, doesn't it? Number 5, MV Augusta F4. If you're into leader class sport bikes, we can bet you know about the MV Augusta F4. Ever since its debut, the motorcycle served as one of the most beautiful superbikes money could buy. And it wasn't just a looker either, as the F4 enjoyed the status of the world's fastest production motorcycle in the late 2000s. In fact MV Augusta also launched a 312 model of its sport bike, where the number denoted its unrestricted top speed. The Italian bike maker pulled its plug in 2018, leaving a hole in the heart of fans as well as its own lineup. To date, there's no leader class sport bike in the company's lineup, and we'd love nothing more than to see the F4 make a comeback. We have full faith that it'd shake up the populated 1000cc segment, enough to make Ducati and BMW bite their nails. Number 4, Yamaha YZF R6. Ever since Yamaha pulled the plug on the R6, there's been a gaping hole in its YZF lineup. Yes, the YZF R7 somewhat helped calm down fanatics, but there's no denying the R6 Supersport is still dearly missed. After all, nothing really comes close to the Supersport's 599cc, inline 4 engine that could scream to almost 17,000 rpm. Aside from the gaping hole, its comeback makes more sense looking at the market. Kawasaki resurrected its Ninja ZX6R for 2023, and Honda quickly followed in with its 2024 CBR 600RR. So looks like the 600cc Supersport segment is back in fashion, and we'd love to see Yamaha hop on the trend. A distant dream, considering Team Blue has a YZF-R9 in the works instead. Number 3, Triumph Daytona 675. Like the Yamaha R6, the Triumph Daytona 675 needs no introduction. It has a cult following worldwide, primarily thanks to its crisp 675cc inline triple engine. The powerhouse had much more mid-range than conventional peaky inline fours, while still matching the peak output of its Japanese counterparts, generating 128 horsepower and 75 newton meters of torque. What made matters sweeter was the excellent handling and an unmatched howling exhaust note. Although the company gave us a Daytona 765, only a handful of examples made it to production. This left many fans bummed out, with most still begging the British bike maker for a new sport bike. It looks like Triumph is answering, as the giant recently teased a new full fared middleweight based on the Trident 660. Only time will tell whether it's actually impressive. Number 2, Aprilia Dorsaduro. Another Aprilia motorcycle we can't get out of our minds is the Dorsaduro, the company's take on the supermoto segment. The stripped back offering started life as a 750cc in 2008, then switched to a 1200cc setup, and finally featured a 900cc powerhouse before its demise. In its last iteration, the Dorsaduro was one of the few true blue rivals of the Ducati Hypermotored. It had an 896cc powerhouse, with a more than entertaining 95 horsepower and 89.5 newton meters of torque. An edgy design, underseat exhausts, and quality underpinnings further gave it an advantage over its rivals. With Ducati's new hypermotored 698 in the picture, Aprilia could benefit strongly from a Dorsaduro 660. Number 1, Honda CB1100RS. No matter how modern motorcycles get, old school bikes just hit differently. This is why the Honda CB1100 is on the list. It first debuted in 2010, but our focus here is on its RS version, 
which broke cover in 2017 as a sportier alternative to the 1100. Our tribal to the renowned Triumph Thruxton 1200, Honda slapped on plenty of fancy bits on the RS. 17-inch aluminum alloy wheels, dual bending Showa forks, sporty rubber, and Olint shock absorbers. Considering Honda's international lineup has no retro options, the RS is well worthy of a second chance. We think it can do good numbers, especially with the Thruxton being discontinued next year. Well guys, which discontinued motorcycles do you think need to make a comeback? Share your comments with us. Thanks for watching and see you the next one.